Hello and welcome to Corbear Alley. Okay, I'm gonna do a little video here of my engine stand, my run-up stand, break-in stand, whatever you want to call it. I've had several inquiries about it. Everybody thinks it's cool. Okay, it was just something cheap. I had parts to make and uh, I'm going to uh, show you how I did that or what I used. Anyone with a minimum of skills can probably do it and if you can't, find somebody else that can. I don't have a hat cam like that fancy Dave DeMoto head out there in California has, but uh, we'll just have to do what I have here. All right, going to turn it around now. Hold on. Ooh. Anybody get sick during that? Okay. What you're looking at is nothing more than an engine stand generally made for V8 type engine. I won this thing years ago at a car show back uh, when I was uh, getting ready to build my V8 Corvair. It sat around after I sold the V8 uh, in storage and I decided to uh, use it to make a run-up stand uh, or break-in stand, whatever you want to call it, for the uh, engines that I was building. Okay, so what I did, I took an old differential, the case right here. Okay, the front transmission end welded on or made a 3 8 inch plate that bolted to the original transmission end of the differential and then welded it to this plate here that was originally had the arms and what have you that would hold the bell housing of a V8. That made it really convenient to do this. Okay, we need a battery. So that was simple enough. I just made a little stand here to hold a common battery. We also need fuel. So we walk around here and I have a little cheap I don't know what that thing holds, a gallon or so, uh, fuel tank. Now I went underneath here, I don't know if you can see that or not, and I just put a hole in the bottom of it, run a tube out, we go over here to a common, cheap electric fuel pump, right on up here. I have the starter, of course. All this is uh, comes apart very quickly, uh, so I can store these pieces and parts. Okay, on the front, had to make some kind of a support here so I have this little a-frame set up right here welded to a piece of channel and uh, to hold it on here I just use these drop these bolts in as uh, locating pins I don't usually put a nut on the end of them uh, I had to extend this thing I got another piece of 2 by 2 steel extended that out and what used to be in the middle this had like a tricycle landing gear and I didn't like the instability of it so I took uh, the centerpiece that originally was on here, cut it up, added uh, a set of casters. So now she has four wheels and it's very stable. So I'll use the inside of the differential here to store various and sundry uh, uh, adapters and things like that. Now <clears throat> I do have a, an older MSD box on here. This was a part number 6200. It was an older one that came in the old Sunoco car when I bought it sat on the shelf for a while and I decided I might as well use it as I started developing this stand. Like a lot of other things, uh, it's kind of morphed into what you see here. I uh, put together a little instrument panel here. Of course, got the fuel pump switch, starter, idiot light to tell me when the ignition is on. Got the battery turned off down here. Tachometer, oil pressure gauge, and a 12 volt accessory uh, connection here because sometimes I put a uh, air fuel ratio meter on here when I'm uh, working on the race engines. Now here, my fuel connections are set up for AN because my race carburetors all have AN uh, connections on it. But this can be unbolted right here and over here. I have your standard steel linkage that would normally work on a set of 140 carbs. And on this end of it, it has an AN connection, which will bolt up to that. So I can adapt it to most anything I want. Now this engine here, I just finished breaking this in. This is a customer engine. It's going to be in a mid-engine uh, little uh, sports racer. It's a mild uh, race engine. It's going to be a, it's a sweet little engine. It is a 140, as you can see. Um, got some neat stuff. Now for the race engines have the remote oil cooler slash filter I have this set up here and I can plumb it right into one of these whenever I break it in no problem I can adapt it to most anything I need to uh, 
I always put a drip pan underneath these things because uh, as we all know, Corvair engines leak. It's not will it leak, it's a matter of when. And uh, if it's a race engine, it's gonna leak sooner or later. Lots of vibration happening with those bad boys. Now, uh, as I said, this is made so it can, I can take it apart and I can store it pretty easily. Uh, it's uh, nothing difficult. Now, on the bottom here, instead of having through bolts, I made studs. There's two studs on these bottom ones. They stay in place. That way, whenever I mount an engine, I usually do this with my cherry picker, the engine on a cherry picker. That way, you can just slide that right in. That lines everything up, throw a couple bolts in it, bolt the starter on it, hook up the wires, turn the battery on, and it's ready to rock and roll. So that's pretty much it. Nothing fancy here. It's, uh, it's something that anybody could build. As I said, it just uh, it kind of morphed. I got tired of... Uh, breaking in engine sitting out there in the driveway on an ATV lift with a wooden uh, cart which uh, I set on fire one time because the headers were resting on the wood and I didn't quite know that until it started smoking I thought the engine was leaking didn't realize it was actually on fire so that's it for my little engine stand and I hope you liked the video we'll catch you later man